Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, the redhead, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law. So don't even try it. Don't even look at her sideways. I will see you. Yeah. Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here today to talk about The Valley, which, of course, is VPR adjacent. We've got a lot of people from the Valley, the VPR area on the show. There's a lot of craziness. There's a lot of questionable, dubious characters. Yeah. And I am loving it. Me too. And I've got a lot to say about it. But before we do, we have to warn you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words. We have stupid opinions. We are unapologetic. So don't come at me, bro. Yeah. And if you're a sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. Mm. But if you're down, welcome to this dumpster. Yeah. And if you are down, make sure you go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe. And join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV cringe. That's where the real shit is. Okay, Whole it's where all the uncensored content. content, so much bonus stuff. Go join. We're getting together tomorrow yeah. to discuss my 600 pound life. Yeah. And also to do some welcome to Plathful Rewind. Yes, bitch. So we are always creating content for Patreon. And yeah. don't you forget it. Don't now, you if you are it. watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe every little thing you do is magic yeah it helps us to grow on the platform thank you in advance thank go all right let's get into the valley all right bitch uh, so we start this episode called tit for tat yeah I wonder ooh. what that's in reference we're gonna to. be getting into the titty whistle of oh it all before God. we do titty gate did you see some of the comments on our video last week on youtube just about the valley i think there was one commenter in particular who was like the valley is a dump oh yeah you i know, believe that i lived there for a certain amount of time and it was just trash and i would never want to go back it's fucking awful yeah have you ever been to the valley yeah i have yeah i have too it's not that great you don't like it no Oh, yeah. I mean, but I grew up going to California. Like, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. So, California was, like, always... I was always going there all the time. And I hated it. I'm like, this is... It's overrated. Northern California is nice. No offense to anybody who lives in California. I don't care if I offend you. It's great. If you like (laughs) to live there, that's awesome. Yeah, but but I I wouldn't. There were some people commenting about how the valley sucks. It's trash. And I guess, like, you start in LA. Yes. Like, you start in i don't know where west hollywood where hollywood is i have no idea oh my god you have but have then, you been there no i mean i've been to west hollywood okay I mean, but i don't remember any oh. of it it's all kind of the same to me yeah i know we were traveling into different areas but i couldn't like make a distinction about wherever i was i just knew it was fucking hot yeah and there was no breeze in the valley none and i prefer to be by the ocean yes the ocean's so. way better anyway yeah it's pretty and stuff but yeah, the valley's trash. That's what somebody said on YouTube. Yeah, Gosh. I agree. So I'm just sharing that with you. That's not my opinion. That's just what I read on YouTube. Yeah. So get over it. But yeah, so. Agro. We start in the valley and Jax and Kristen are going out to lunch and Jax takes her to a steakhouse, even though Kristen apparently has been a vegetarian for a million years. years. <laughs> yes. He takes her to a fucking steakhouse. I'm like, okay. Right. Well, she's known him for 16 years. Yes. Yeah. And the entire time she's been a vegetarian, but she could be a lifelong vegetarian. But this just is a testimony to the fact that Jack doesn't give a fuck. No, he's stupid as fuck. Right. And he has arranged this lunch meeting so that he can pretend that he's really just trying to be there for Kristen. Mm -hmm. Like, I regard you as my sister, Kristen. And I'm just really worried about, like, you having a baby with this rando Colorado. And, like, are you thinking this shit through? Why do you care? He's yeah. like trying to act like the dad of the group. And I'm like, dude, your life is about to be wrecked right yeah. now. Like I Detonation know nation. you and Central. Brittany are going to divorce and then you're going to have to deal with all this custody shit. Like mm-hmm. your life's about to get wrecked. And so you're trying to yeah. like produce these moments where you're just acting like you care about Kristen. Even though you don't. No. You think she's a dirty person who sleeps around a lot. And who you dick think, hops. Yeah. And, and you, makes terrible decisions. Exactly. And he's just fucking judging her. And I feel bad for her, even though I'm kind of judging her the same way. No, but I mean, that's that's a valid point. Because yeah. actually, in this scene, 
I was watching her and the vibe budget. budget that I got from it was like she really wants a friend. Yeah. Like she would really like to have a certain kind of relationship with Jax. And of course, in the last episode, she's like, can you just be supportive? Be my bro. Can you just be there for me? Uh. Like, I think she really needs the presence of that kind of energy in her life. Yeah. And she's looking to Jax Taylor of all people to give her some semblance of that. And he's just devoid of any ability to do so. Of course. Because he's a fucking crow magnon unconscious piece of shit asshole yeah the butch version of sandoval who does not care about anybody and so it's like it's sad because i do think you're right Kristen wants like the friends group like from the show friends Mm -hmm. she wants to be able to grow with all of these people and they all suck yeah. Kristen. So yeah. I don't know why there's only a couple that have it. any redeeming value. Like I was thinking maybe Brittany yeah. had some redeeming value, but like she lost all good faith with me at the end of this episode. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, you're just as bad as Jax. Yep. Kristen, you don't need these people. Nope, not at all. But then they talk it out or whatever. And Kristen's like, okay, it's fine, but don't talk about it ever again because I'm just going to do it me. Oh, he will. He, and he he's will. setting you up in this moment. Is he setting you up? He Kristen? is. He is 100%. And then Kristen talks about titty gate nipple gate which was last episode when she grabbed jesse's nipple and then he grabbed her nipple and <gasps> oh my god and so she's talking about it like it's such a, a big deal and jack's like what that's fucking lame man oh my god I'll have super to inappropriate it. like okay um Kristen, it was inappropriate of you to do that to jesse and look jesse is the scum of the earth yeah there's nobody out here advocating for this quaffed douchebag yeah but Kristen, you put your hands on him first like keep your hands to yourself everybody keep your hands to yourself unless you got consent exactly and i'm like you're saying this contradicting yourself being like i'm not close with him at all so why would he do that to me and i'm like then why would you do it to him if you're right. not close to him it's kind of weird right and granted like i get it it's a female nipple it's different is it is it i mean i listen guess. when i touch my husband's nipple he's into it sexually <laughs> so i'm sorry if i've got some rat if i got it. some i know he loves it honey. i don't want to hear i mean it. and then i put my mouth on that nipple Last episode, we're talking game about over Nipple game over it. i'm just saying it's a, i mean it's not purely sexual yeah it can become sexual very quickly for a man or a woman sure so i don't understand why she has like some reason to be offended but jesse does not it's because they have nothing else to talk I about guess so so they got to talk about titty gate oh god luke gets really upset we'll get I there know, i'm he like does. okay luke i mean aren't you a, a cognizant don't you understand like that's hypocritical yeah or is it just me is it my internal misogyny coming yeah it forth? is you're such a <laughs> misogynist i think that she should have kept her hands to herself <laughs> yeah jesus okay how about nobody touch anybody's nipples thank you thank you more of the story then we get to jesse and michelle taking mm-hmm. their daughter isabella <gasps> for bike riding and this is where they're talking about like their parenting styles and michelle's like yeah i didn't know that jesse was such a fucking asshole especially being a parent and being super impatient until we had a kid because she's very soft when she talks to Isabella and is nurturing kind, and a good mother like a mom and Jesse is like yeah if I just fucking scream at her Isabella she'll shut the fuck up I'm like wow I can't believe you said that well he talks about a scenario in which he's walking into a hypothetical room and Michelle is there talking to Isabella in conciliatory tones like I don't know Isabella maybe we should do it this way and Isabella's resisting because she's three and this is what toddlers do of course and so Michelle is trying to reason with her and and speak to her in this way and then Jesse just yells yeah Isabella and then Isabella snaps too because she's afraid. Yeah. And I actually had to pause it right here because I'm like, first of all, like that feels abusive to me. It is. And you can see Michelle's face as he says this on the couch. She's, she's just uncomfortable. like, I'm very, very concerned. Yep. Um, but like, Jesse, do you have absolutely no awareness as to how this is going to look? Because it seems to me he's actually producing his moments on camera yeah. to come across as a full-on fucking sexist, misogynist, terrible dad. Yeah. Like, if you were that, wouldn't you try to come across as not that? No. I don't know. He's what like he super doing? weird. He's like acting like Michelle's on the wrong for not being into him anymore because he kind of alludes to it. He's like, I don't know what changed in our marriage like when we had a kid like or if I just turned into somebody that Michelle doesn't like and I'm like well no seems like you've always been this way you're just a critical 
asshole and you're impatient and you yell at a three-year-old like a mm-hmm. piece of shit like i i don't respect that kind of shit like i'm gonna raise our kids montessori and be all gentle parenting well i'm gonna try right i'm gonna try my human being but it's right. like i don't want to sit there and scream right at my three-year-old kid who doesn't know any better because all that shows is that you're not emotionally regulated as a as an adult man yeah, because you got to shout at your kid. You can't tell me that Michelle is not trying to have enlightened conversations yes. with Jesse about like how she would prefer to raise their child. And he's just acting like a troglodyte. He's yeah. like, no, I'll make fire. This is my child. Isabella. Like, ew, this is 2024. I thought mm-hmm. we were trying to to bring up some enlightened people, enlightened men who know who want to be good fathers and husbands. But I guess not if Jesse is an example of this. Well, and it doesn't make any sense to me why he's treating michelle like this because she is a oh my god goddess she's a dime she is fucking way out of his league. gorgeous so gorgeous in I'm every like, single way why aren't you treating her like danny treats nia oh and like god. worshiping the ground she compare walks compare and contrast seriously there's a reason that nia is so in love with her husband mm-hmm. and would do anything for him yes, and is ma'am. taking care of their children and is yes. just such a beautiful mama because he creates a safe space for her to do so yep but michelle does not have that safe space no. She doesn't. And once he fucking stops telling Isabella she needs to get on the tricycle and let's go, then Isabella goes and walks to the tricycle and gets on it. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So she's already getting afraid of her dad because he's a piece of shit. Yep. Asshole. Unfortunate. And we Mm -hmm. can see their impending divorce um, on the horizon. Yes. Then we have Kristen and Luke Colorado going on a hike with their dog who shits on the trail. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, did they clean that up? No. Because there's horse shit on the trail. And of course, yeah. nobody cleaned that up. And I, maybe you wouldn't expect people to. But if your dog is shitting on the trail, you ought to clean that up. No. And I just have a feeling. It's California. Down in my butt. <laughs> that they're not cleaning up their dog shit. It's California. There's human shit around everywhere oh, too. <laughs> so I mean, sorry. With a needle right on top. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Sounds delightful. It's sorry. great. What a lovely God, hike. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but they get up to the top Mm -hmm. and they start their conversation with Kristen, like talking about how uncomfortable she is with everybody talking about her reproductive rights. And like, why do people care? And I I don't want to be talking about it because I don't know if my body can actually achieve pregnancy. And I don't know if like this is something I'm going to be able to do, but I can tell you one goddamn thing. I don't want everybody to talk about it every time I'm around. Like, leave me alone. This is between me and you, Luke. This is our thing. Like, why do they have to interject into it? And I totally felt that. I did too. And I, I... I don't know why anybody needs to make comments about it because if Kristen, even though she's been a hot mess this mm-hmm. whole entire time and dick hopping and whatever. And it is a little bit still a hot mess, I totally think. I'm just thinking. 100%. But if she wants to get her life together and she wants to have a kid with this guy who also wants to have a kid with her and put a baby in her, like, more power to you. It's fine. And if they love each other, that's kind of all you need, really, to right. have a kid, you know? So, like, even if you don't cares? end up romantically, if you guys are great co parents, then that's fantastic. It's a great environment right. for the kids. So, I felt really bad about this. And one thing I don't think you know is that Kristen actually had a miscarriage last fall. So Aww. this is probably taking place, I want to say July, August of 2023. And so I think shortly after what we're seeing right now, on film she actually does get pregnant mm. but um it doesn't go to term and oh, so that's she's sad yeah i can only imagine how it would be to be 40 years old and all of your best friends are out here getting husbands getting wives getting partners having children buying homes and you were dumb enough to sell your home for that dope i know that dumpy Dope. Oh my God, Dope Alex, boy. we'll get there. That weirdo. He's super weird. Who the fuck was that? Oh, it's like God. a ghoul, a ghost has entered the room. Uncut Get gems. me a Ouija board. Yeah, the fuck did, What the fuck kind of specter was that anyway? I know. Like, you're still kind of a mess, but yeah. I, I feel like bad for her. And I do too. I think Luke's a supportive boyfriend because then they start talking about titty whistlegate i know and so she talks about how jesse grabbed her nipple after she grabbed his and luke gets all face ethan plath red in his cheeks yeah oh my god he's like fuming he's like testosterone's rushing through his veins and he's like what they touched your nipple that's for me to touch she's like i'm gonna have to confront him and that's cool I mean, I guess. I mean, how come you're not calling out the fact that she touched him? I mean, I don't know. That just seems like a glaring thing to not talk about. And on the couch, he actually says, well, if Kristen slapped Jesse, would he feel okay to just turn around and slap Kristen? I mean, that's a good point. 
It is. But I mean, like women should also not be slapping men. I yeah. Mean, we should just not be doing things like that. Yeah. How about we respect everybody's bodies? Yeah. I mean, what but a But he's pissed off because he touched her no-no part. Yeah. That's my no-no part. I put my mouth on there. Yeah. You cannot touch that. Yeah. Hog make fire. <laughs> like okay so he's gonna get all mad and confront the guys about it later in the episode it's what it's setting it up yeah. for and then we have a scene where Kristen, michelle and nia go to jujitsu and this is where nia i'm like hey queen mm -hmm. she's like yeah i've been doing taekwondo like my whole life and i'm a fourth degree black belt. yeah and i'm like yes bitch yes so she's taking the girls to do jujitsu which is like silly because as if Kristen and yeah. michelle are gonna do it but then they all sit down and like they're chatting with the girls and stuff mm -hmm. and this is where michelle's mentioning her marriage with jesse and talking about therapy like wanting couples therapy right yeah i think couples therapy she also mentioned individual therapy but mm -hmm. it sounds like he doesn't want any therapy because he doesn't think asshole. anything is wrong with him right and then Kristen talks about her pregnancy and everybody judging her for wanting to be pregnant and all the girls are like yeah that's fucked up yeah and nobody should be talking about you and your um reproductive rights and your motherhood journey like yeah. that's fucked up and stupid why are men doing that exactly men are you okay no they're right. not and then after this we have the guys going yeah. to do skate hockey <laughs> so dumb so so lame <laughs> i think jesse's the one that's the hockey player or whatever i guess i get and he's like yeah all these guys fucking suck at hockey i'm like who cares nobody cares shut up you're not in high school anymore we don't think you're hot you're fucking 40 nobody cares if you're popular yeah. on the skater ice hockey whatever you guys are doing nobody cares yeah and jason's there the lawyer guy who's yeah. like yeah i work out but i suck at skating yeah i like jason so much yeah He's very mature. Yes. Well, at some point, um, Jax does mention to Jesse that Kristen's got an issue with him titty whistling her nippa. Yeah. And Jesse's like, I have no recollection of that whatsoever. And I'm thinking back to myself, like, I don't think he was drunk off his ass, blacked out at the county fair party I know. the week before. Like, how come you don't remember? Unless you're just walking around your life committing these micro and macro aggressions and not even paying attention to the fact that you called Lala a mistress and a side piece. Like, maybe you don't remember this shit. So he looks like actually surprised. Yeah. I don't think he's lying here when he's like, I don't remember doing that. I think he doesn't remember doing that. Yeah, I think he's an asshole and I think he's like critical and says fucked up shit and does fucked up shit and then just doesn't remember. Yeah. Or like doesn't care to remember because he doesn't think it's a big deal. Right. That's the kind of vibe that it I got It doesn't register it. for him yeah and then Jax shares with the group that he is inviting Kristen's ex-boyfriend the dope and the dump Alex to their guys night out which they are throwing for Danny because he pants them yeah <laughs> I just I'm sorry I don't get these guys are children so ridiculous. and actually Jesse calls him a child like you are a yeah. fucking child for doing that and also what if Alex and Luke have a conversation while they're out at the bar and Luke decides to dump Kristen. Yeah. Like, what if you actually fuck up their relationship because you're trying to meddle and Jax is like, oh, gosh, I guess I didn't think of that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You don't care. This is all just a work by you. Yes. He's like smiling, too. He's like yeah. already planning on doing it because he's asking the guys if he should do it. And the guys are like, no. Uh, absolutely not. Bad idea. Please don't do that. And then he ends up doing it anyway right. because Jax is wanting to create drama. That's all he's doing. And he's like totally... This whole episode, I'm like, you are scripting this. Yeah. And you're doing this on purpose, maybe because you want the ratings and you want it to be drama malicious and you want this show to be successful so you can get your paycheck. But also because you want to distract from the fact that you're going to get a divorce from Britney because Britney's going to get fed up with your bullshit. And you're fed up with her bullshit. Yep. You don't like her. Like, no. I don't see any affection or intimacy between either of you. None. And I, I mean, how much do you like your son? Because like right. there's a scene where Jax is home. Britney's mom is there. Britney's somewhere walking around. And Cruz starts crying in another room. And Jax doesn't even get up. No. So grandma gets up and goes to see what's going on with Cruz. He's stuck underneath the couch or whatever and Brittany comes out and helps and Jax doesn't move in the direction of his child mm -mm. at all and the weird thing was like Brittany didn't ask him to yeah it seemed like everybody just expected Jax to not give a shit I know I don't think he's present in the relationship as a husband or a father or a father mm -hmm. I don't think he loves them at all I don't think he cares I think he's just like sitting there like yeah this is my life I guess because I fucked this chick and mm -hmm. now she got pregnant and I have a kid and yep. I'm like, I don't want to be here. Right. 
it's pretty fucked up. It is. And so he's meddling in everybody else's lives so he doesn't have to focus on his own. But don't worry about it. God's going to get you. Oh, yeah. He's God don't, get you God don't like good. ugly. And Jax, you ugly. Yeah, he hella ugly. You ugly. And then we have a scene after this where we're at Danny and Nia's condo. And I oh my God. love... I swoon. I know. I was even swooning over Danny. I'm like, like I love you. You know, he's about... Seven to twelve inches shorter than I per- <laughs> I usually like in a man, but ask me if I give a shit no. because when he starts talking about how he met Nia, and I think he was at like an engagement party, and she walks into the room and he's like, "I have never seen a more beautiful woman," and he's just Ugh. like so taken with her. Love. They don't get together, but then three months later, he's at church doing some church service something or other because yeah. he's a wholesome boy. Godly man. In walks Nia, and he's like, "Game over. I love this woman forever." Ugh. And in this scene. I guess she's getting ready to leave for work because mm-hmm. she's a pageant trainer or whatever. whatever yeah. But she's trying to pump her boobies so that she can supply milk for the kids. And he's going to be taking care of the kids while she's gone. And he's just like, she's like, I'm trying to drink a lot of water. I'm trying to eat apples. And he just comes up and he's like, you're doing so great, babe. <gasps> you are so amazing. Thank you so much. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Everybody stop what you're doing yes. and watch Danny. Yes. And all you husbands on this show, watch Danny. Let's all be like Danny. For real. It's kind of interesting how they have this couple paired with Michelle and Jesse because it's kind of like they're mirrored together like because they all look very similar. A little bit, yeah. I mean, it's like very interesting the, the stark contrast because fucking uh jesse is mm-hmm. in there criticizing michelle at every goddamn turn right and just being a piece of shit drinking mimosas at 9 a.m meanwhile danny's got a baby in one hand yeah complimenting his wife talking about how much he you're loves so her. amazing you're thank so you so beautiful. much oh my god i fell in love with him my short king my short daddy <laughs> short papa yeah, hey I'll some of those you. short kings they got big dicks that's right and then you get a woman like miss usa oh she's she's gorgeous, gorgeous but like she could get any man in the world. Totes. She could get a man of me. She could get a billionaire yep. baby. Yep. But she's going to be with Danny because he's a good man. That's what a good man is. Yes, ma'am. That's what a good man does. And that'll get you a good woman. Yes. Yep. And then they kind of talk about the pantsing of Danny. And he was like, it's whatever. It was a high school thing. And Nia kind of acknowledges her reaction to it. She's like, you know, I've been dealing a lot with postpartum. My emotions are kind of all over the place. Like I'm trying to accept that this is my new normal. And I felt really bad for her because I'm like, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you just had a fucking baby. They're like a month old. Yes. Literally six weeks. So like she's got all these hormones raging through her body. That's no joke. Postpartum's yeah. no joke. And so I felt for her, but she's like, I still feel like it was fucked up. Yeah. That they did this. And it was. It was. Because we're not fucking high schoolers anymore. Yeah. We're 40 something. I'm not consenting to being no. naked in the middle of your county fair party. No, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. So I felt for them. I love Danny. He's great. Yep. King He's shit. winning me over. Yes. And then this is where we have that weird little scene with Michelle, who's preparing for the girls' night with all of that takeout. And fucking Jesse's bitch ass comes into the kitchen he's like wow he's sitting there not helping not doing anything none at all he's like wow all of this stuff and she's like yeah i know i should have prepared a little bit better i gotta figure out what i'm doing with all of it and then he echoes that and he's like yeah you really should have figured that out before 30 minutes and you're not (sighs) together with this not everything's prepared like yeah my god just okay well just punt this guy what value do you add to her life like how are you helping her in any way just riding her riding her kid honey you're about to get dumped so spectacularly and the women of the world love to see it oh yeah dude you're gonna end up being 45 yeah sitting at home in your bachelor pad dumb hair with your dumb hair you're getting fatter every year yep yep you fucking loser and you're gonna be single yep hitting up girls on tinder 21 year old they're gonna think you're just an old fucking loser la loser yeah Yep. Single forever. Yep. Sad, pitiful. And Michelle's going to bop on by, honey, with her beautiful daughter. She's going to find her a good man like Jason. Not Jason, but a man like Jason. Yep. Who can make Danny. money. Who's not stuffing her into a weird house near Chateau Marmont with a fucked up galley kitchen with a washer and dryer in the kitchen. I know. It's I'm a like, very small house. Like, she probably just wants a normal life. And yep. all you care about is appearances and getting drunk at 9 a.m. Yep. I hate him. I hate him, too. I hate him. He's really hateable. He's terrible. And then we have guys night yeah and while guys night is happening we have girls night which we'll get to in a little bit but guys night shows up and we have Jax and luke there sitting at some they're the weird... first ones to arrive where are they at like some dave and busters type kind thing of. that's what it looks like it looks lame as fuck really cringe yeah um but luke and Jax are just sitting there and it's fucking weird 
It looks like, how are you awkward. doing? And Jax is like, you know, doing fine. <laughs> How's your week? <laughs> looks like, it's all right. Yeah. And Luke starts to talk about the conversation he's going to need to have with Jesse. Right. Because we got to confront this titty whistle bullshit and I'm going to have to take him to task. And Jax is like, oh, yeah, I know you want to talk to him because that's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see the drama pop off. Danny walks in. Yeah. Really great guy. Um, and then Jesse comes on in. Yes. And then Luke immediately takes Jesse to the side and is like, yeah. I got to talk to you. Man to man. Okay, Luke. And it's like, oh, you know, whatever. Luke's so tall compared mm-hmm. to Jesse, this small he little man. Like an alien, though. I know. <laughs> what do they call those aliens from like the 50s and 60s, like the tall whites? Yeah. I think they call them the tall whites. <laughs> I think that's also a coffee drink in Australia. So I might be getting that's a flat white. Anyway, he looks like one of those tall white I mean, aliens. He is a tall white. Yeah, he just looks very strange to yeah. me. Another translucent person on our television 100%. sets. But he's more of a man than Jesse. Absolutely. He's- Jesse? Er, yeah jesse cows to him i know i mean jesse surprisingly doesn't pop off Mm -hmm. i think a man can read another man's energy and luke was uh, standing on business he was he was standing all tall and macho and he's like yeah um why'd you fucking twist my girlfriend's nipple you piece of shit and jesse's like dude i'm sorry Mm -hmm. i don't know if i was too drunk or what because i i'm a chronic alcoholic that I'm not <laughs> admitting to. I'm not paying attention to how I abuse people wantonly in my life. Yep. I'm so sorry that happened. He does acknowledge it. He says, I'm sorry. I don't remember that. And I would never do that ever again, even though you're probably going to do it later in the season. And Luke is like, well, as long as you apologize to Kristen and Jesse's like, I will apologize to Kristen. Yeah. Even though I think Kristen should also apologize to Jesse, but whatever. Yeah. They come to an agreement. Yeah. And, and they fine. settle it like men. Yeah. it's There's no drama or anything. But while they are over there... We've got Danny and Jax left at the table. And mm-hmm. this is when Jax tells Danny, oh, by the way, I invited Alex, Kristen's ex. And Danny just starts laughing. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing, Jax? He can't believe it. He's like, what? I'm, my intention is really good here. Like, I really think these two guys have a lot in common. Obviously, Kristen. But like, they have a lot of, maybe if they talk, they'll get along. And Danny's like, you're so fucking full of shit, guy. You're so fucking stupid. And Jax is also saying like, well, this is just how I am. Like, I'm friends with all my exes. So like all the other guys that want to enter my club of the cool guys and okay. the cool men. Number one guy. In they the have to be okay with it. They have to be friends with all of their exes. And Danny's like, why yeah in his talking head like a real man he's Mm. like i'm not friends with any of nia's exes she's not friends with any of my exes Mm -hmm. we don't talk to any of them because no that's a bomb in a relationship like you just don't do that i'm like respect respect king yes i love him yes he's the only man of integrity in this whole group jason too and luke maybe and and luke yes Yes. but the rest jesse and jacks no right they suck yes and um alex yeah (laughs) (laughs) what a weirdo so fucking weird very strange yeah so after luke and jesse talk they come back to the table and then i think it was doesn't Jax take luke yeah Jax is like okay now it's time for me to talk to you luke so he pulls him aside and he says hey by the way you know, this is a really great night. I'm so glad you came. However, yeah. you know, I really think you should give Alex a chance because, you know, he's my friend. I've known him for a while. And looks like, why the fuck would I ever want to sit down and talk to and or have a relationship with Kristen's ex? I don't want to ever do that. And Jax is like, oh, well, it sucks to be you because I happened to invite him tonight. Oh, and by the way, he's walking in right now. Yeah. He's right there. <laughs> and then the camera pans to this absolute schlump of a dude. And I'm like, Kristen, you are objectively beautiful, honey. Yeah. You're, oh, I think she's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I think she looks good. She's, she's 40 fine. years old. But like, I think she looks good. I mean, I think she compared to Lou oh, yeah. and yeah. compared to Alex. Uh, I'm like, sure. you can get a, another man. Why yeah. are we? I mean, and Luke is an upgrade from alex yeah but like how did you end up with this guy and how did he ensorcel you and convince you to sell your home which you owned as an asset baby girl i do not know this guy literally looks like adam sandler from uncut gems did you watch that (laughs) like he looks exactly like him no i'll show it to you how he's dressed is fucking weird at a dave and buster like how he's showing up all prepped and poised for the camera like in her interstitial Kristen is like this guy was terrible to me awful like when everything blew up 
on Vanderpump Rules and I was fired for being a fucking racist or whatever it was that she was fired for. Like he berated me. He treated me like shit. He called me a washed up reality TV star and then he dumped me. Yeah. So he was only with her for the clout. Yep. And now he has an in back into the clout. Because Jax let him. Because Jax wants him to come to the Dave and Busters and yeah. start talking shit. Yeah. About it's super Kristen. weird, like, because Jax is kind of coming at it with Luke, like, if you want to be a part of the guys yeah. and part of my group, you got to be friends with Kristen's ex. And it's like, why? And Luke's like, no, fuck you. Yeah. And I respect that. I did too. It's like, absolutely not. I have no interest. This guy's a fucking ding dong. Yep. And I'm not going to be talking to him. And then Jax goes over to Alex. Yeah. And he starts the conversation with like, didn't you pay Kristen's mortgage? Just trying to get Alex on camera to start maligning Kristen. It's so obvious what he's doing here under the guise of what? I'm just trying to help. I think Luke would really like him or I think Kristen needs to get over it. K Jax. And so this Alex fucker starts like, no, I didn't pay her mortgage, but like I sold her house for free. What does that even mean? Well, he was a realtor, I guess, or he had his license. And so he actually listed and sold her house for free and she he didn't take a commission. Okay. But like, if I was a realtor... I would sell your house for free. Duh. If my husband was selling his house, I'm going to sell that shit for free. In yeah. A, that's, I mean, you don't have to. It'd be fine to collect a commission, but like that doesn't make you some stand up guy because you waived your commission. And then he's like, yeah. And she lived with me for like six months. She didn't pay for anything. You like, guys were in a relationship. Why are we doing this on camera again? Exactly. Because he's a washed up loser and he wants a paycheck too. And Jax is letting him. Jax just wants him to talk mad shit about Kristen. Yep. And wants to. Jax literally says he's like, I want everybody to get the real story. Yeah. I want Luke. Why? To have the real story. I'm like, who fucking cares, dude? It's really weird how Jax is like trying to produce this mm -hmm. show i'm like there's a lot more drama that would be a lot more interesting than you trying to make luke get mad at alex and Kristen get mad at you for and inviting alex, alex expose Kristen. gosh yeah it's super bizarre yeah well it's off it's also obvious what Jax is trying to do for sure and he's not very good at what he's doing like no. we can see right through it 100 percent. but then we bop on over to girls night yep they're taking tequila shots Mayla. because, you know, Brittany loves her tequila shots. Of course. And Brittany apologizes to Nia again for Jax pantsing her husband. And I'm like, Brittany, you are a nice person, but you need to stop defending your piece of shit husband. Yeah. She's like, an enabler. All the time. It's really ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And she's still trying to like downplay it, even though she knew that Nia was upset about it. She's like, yeah, it's Nia starts deal. crying again. I know. Because she's upset by it. And she's just had a baby and her emotions are all over the place. And it's just like, Brittany. And Brittany starts defending, not defending Jax, but like making excuses again. And she's like, well, he will never do it again. And Nia's like, again, do it again. She's like, I don't think you know. I am a fourth degree black belt. He will Bitch. never do that shit again. Bitch. Guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. I will physically harm him. I love that. Yeah, me too. The Queen. implied violence was great. I know. Against so Jax good. Taylor. And then Brittany's like, yeah, whatever, and takes another shot. Well, well, she's, she's not the brightest she's bulb so in the crazy. fucking box. No, she's and not. Her, can we have a sidebar? Yeah. A side Same bar, but her mouth was really distracting. Girl, the eyebrows, too. I'm like, I can't. The whole, like, needing to raise the eyebrows up into your forehead thing is ridiculous. Well, did you peep her on the after show? Because yeah. she was there with, I want to say, Lala. And yeah. I was looking at her mouth. And her mouth still looks, as we say in Hawaii, hemajang. It still looks a little problematic. I know. Well, didn't she say, like, on the last after show, she's like, it was my it was a side effect of my... Procedures she or said whatever. on her podcast that okay. it was a side effect of her double chin removal procedure okay. um, and that it would only last for about four episodes. But if what we're seeing on the after show was filmed, I don't know, I think sometime around the new year, then it hasn't changed. It really hasn't changed. Are we going to see I'm you unbotched? Really devastated. I'm really. But once you fucking sever a nerve, I, know. I don't think you can reconnect those. Nope. I think that's gone forever yeah um so i hope she did not do that but i, I was just like watching her mouth fixedly i know i feel bad i i'm like man i'm pretty stuck Ooh, that's really bad and i'm not going to beat a dead horse here i'm not going to continue to say this but i just noticed it it was really glaring it's very obvious it was in and our then faces she leans over and says hey oh by the way Kristen." Brittany does by the way Kristen." Ugh. um alex might be there tonight at the guys dave and buster thing and Kristen's like Excuse me, what? what? 
why would he be there? And Brittany's like, well, because Jax and him are friends. And Kristen's like, since when? And why does he need to be there? And then Brittany's like, well, you know, it's fine. Like, it's it, you're not there, so it's okay. And Brittany's like, or Kristen's like, I don't care. That's yeah. fucked up that Jax is bringing it up because Luke's there. And then Brittany's like, well, maybe Luke shouldn't have been there. Right. I'm like, oh my God. Do you see how she's running interference for Jax? It's ridiculous. So it's not just Jax. And we're not, and I think Kristen in this episode referred to Brittany as a saint. Like Jax locked out because he found a saint who would put up with his bullshit. No, she's She's fucking full of bullshit too. Yeah. She's running his defense. She's um, advocating for Jax and I'm just like how can you with a straight face pretend that Jax was not malicious in inviting Alex and even Kristen's like that's absolutely malicious we have Zach mm-hmm. the gay guy yep. is he wearing a wig honey I don't know is he wearing do, does hair occur like pay. that in nature like he probably got his hair hairline plugs. is lower than Teresa Giudice's maybe it's, it's like all plugs. the way to his almost eyebrows I know. and it's so thick I'm like is this honey. a tube I don't know. Oh, my God. Plugs. Okay, something's going on. But in any event, he's just like, no, Brittany, that was fucked up. Yeah. Alex should not be there. And that's when Brittany's like, well, maybe Luke shouldn't be there. Oh, my God. like, who the fuck are you, Brittany? You shouldn't be here. Because I remind you, Beatrice, she actually orchestrated the meeting that she had with Jax Taylor the first time. She flew her happy ass from Kentucky to Las Vegas, where she knew the VPR people were going to be, just to meet Jax, to glom on to Jax, and to never let him go. See, that's, to me, I'm like, Brittany just seems like she's hopelessly in love with Jax for some reason. Why? And she's trying to be a good wife by defending her husband and defending the father of her child because she can't see, because she's delusional, that he's a piece of shit. She's complicit in advancing a storyline. They talked about this shit. Jax told her well in advance, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to invite Alex. We're going to continue to talk about Kristen trying to get pregnant with Luke, and this is what we're going to be doing. And Brittany said yes, and Brittany is participating. Brittany knows what the fuck she's doing. She's not an unconscious little um, Kentucky girl. No. She's doing it on purpose to Kristen. And so is Jax. But then she's going to throw him under the bus later on in the season and talk about how he's not fucking her and then they're going to break up. Yeah. I don't know. So it's how we're going to get there. I'm glad we are going to get there. But like, I'm just saying she's not as innocent as she says. So Kristen says, well, this is malicious. Yeah. What Jax is doing. And then Jack and then Brittany says, well, isn't what you did? malicious and then we get a five minutes later yeah and zach is in the kitchen screaming to michelle i did not say that is that what he said yeah i did did not not say that that. i never said that michelle right and then everybody's kind of fighting and then it says to be continued yeah so i'm like yes i think there's a a bomb that's about to be dropped at the girls night britney's about to drop it and i think Kristen says something about Zach. I think Zach knows something, saw oh. something, said something. And in this moment, Kristen's about to drop it and then everything explodes. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. This is the drama that I want. want. I want this drama, yeah. not the weird Jack's pr- you know, produced drama of bringing her ex over to Guy's Night at Dave I like Buster's. That too. I mean, it's whatever, but it's like so this much is, less this is Yeah, this is the good I stuff. I love the gossip. I love when real s- shit comes out yeah. and nobody wanted it to be on camera yeah. and it is on camera yeah. and then we get to see the fights i'm like yes inject it into my veins very good veins. very good so yeah it seems like this season's gonna pop off seems like there's gonna be some entertaining shit happening some breakups yeah i'm into it i am too if it means the downfall of Jax taylor again because yeah. he already had a downfall when he was fired from vpr oh my God. and he was a perpetual antagonist and asshole on that show like if it comes with the downfall of jesse and Jax, i'm here for it i celebrate it i love it i live it i breathe it chef's kiss now is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we go beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review ah! it really helps us grow the pod so thank you so much oh my god your voice is dying i know i'm gonna get you for so out long. of here i know we we filmed vpr right before this yeah we recorded it um we will be back next week to talk seeking sister wife which yes. is another crazy that is a lit. tlc crazy show um, and continue with the valley and VPR until then though raccoons please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys <laughs> <laughs>